Restaurant Marketing Secrets, episode 152. I'm your host, Matt Plapp, and we are brought to you by America's Best Restaurants. America's Best Restaurants is on a path to help you, independent restaurant owners, find more frequent customers because infrequent customers do not pay your bills. It's all about building relationships, creating customer loyalty, and retaining people long term. If you have to keep going back to the pot to find new customers, then you're going to lose long term. And this also relates to marketing. If you consistently have to leverage front end marketing attention as your only means of getting in front of your customers, that means you are renting their attention. Let me give you an example. Let's say you run a Facebook advertising campaign and you spend $25 and you get people's attention and it works. A hundred people walk in your restaurant and spend $20 a piece and you're like, holy crap, that worked. Well, guess what has to happen in order for you to get that outcome again? You have to buy that same ad and hope that that call to action works. But take it the other way. What if that ad that you ran gathered your customers' data? The only way they could get what drove them in to spend money was to give you information, their name, their email, their phone number, their birthday. And now you have that data and you look and go, holy crap, we spent $25. We got 200 people's information. We got 100 people to walk in the restaurant. By the way, that would be a hell of a promotion. So... (laughs) Don't expect that. That's a pretty solid promotion. Typically, it's a 3 to $5 acquisition cost. So if you were to get 100 people to walk in your restaurant from some type of online marketing campaign, you could expect to spend $500 to do it. So let's just go ahead and do that. Let's say you spent $500 and you got 100 people to walk in your restaurant and spend $2,000. And you were stoked. You were excited. And you wanted to do it again. But all you did then was just run some ads on Facebook or Google or YouTube or the radio or TV or direct mail. But if you did the second part, if the the sale or the promotion or the call to action, whatever it is that got those 100 people for $500 to come into the restaurant, required them to tell you who they were, well, now you know what worked and you have people's information that that ad activated. So you go, wow, I know I spent 500 bucks. Let's just say for shits and giggles, you got 300 people's information, which actually, that's about right, $1.25, $1.50. So you got 300 people's information. And of those 300 people, 100 walked in the restaurant, 33%, which would be outstanding. Now you know what it took to get those first 100 people to come in. Now you also got to go, okay, I've got 200 people's information. What do I do with that? to get them to walk in. This is what I call aim and expect versus hope and pray. The majority of small businesses, the vast majority of independent restaurants, hope and pray that whatever they put out there brings people in. Whereas if you know what brings them in and you run marketing campaigns correctly, Instead of renting people's attention, and I hope you get what I mean by renting their attention, that $500 on a, let's just say a radio commercial, you're paying that radio commercial 500 bucks for permission to talk to their customers. What you do with that 500 bucks is up to you. If you don't do enough to find out who they are, you have to go spend 500 bucks again to reach them. But if your radio commercial got them to take a specific action that gave you their information, well, now you have their information. You no longer need the radio station to reach those same people. You could possibly leverage your $500 next time to reach 500 new people and then use the data from the first batch to target those people. That's what I want you to think about when it comes to how you're going to find people. That is a key element of your marketing campaigns is not always renting people's attention. You have to build your own audience. You have to take efforts in your marketing to build your own database, a audience that you own. Otherwise, you are completely at the 
What's the word I'm looking for? The beck and call. Now, there's some terminology I can't think of, but you're at the will of somebody else's audience. I think it's that you're at their beck and call. I think is what I was thinking of. So when you run marketing campaigns, you've got to think about what is the expect, what is the hopeful outcome. So I wrote down this little list here, and I was making this for somebody else. And I was talking about for me some of the things I look at when I create a marketing campaign. Number one, who is my specific audience? Number two, what is my call to action? Number three, what is my expected outcome? Number four, how do I plan on retargeting them online? Number five, how do I plan on retargeting them via email and text? And then number six, how do I plan on retargeting the people who clicked my call to action but didn't give me the action I desired? Let's say it's email, name, and phone number. How do I retarget them? That's just a basic for me kind of a spelling out building a marketing campaign. And there's a billion ways you could do it, but that's just to me is one of the easiest ways for me to look at and understand because I want to have marketing campaigns that drive sales. I want to have marketing campaigns that drive engagement. I want to have marketing campaigns that drive traffic somewhere. But I have to have a plan set up. And if what I just walked you through requires me every time to repurchase that customer's information, then you're going to lose. And I'll give you an example. I'm going to log into a random client's dashboard here. Let's go to their dashboard. And we've got a bunch of dashboards, but this is a, the acquisition dashboard. So I'm going to go to a restaurant we work with called Lake End, newer client, blowing it up, crushing it. So we are, let me look and see, when did this start? I think about two and a half, three months ago. It started October 26th. So we're sitting here. As I record this, it's January 8th. This is going to air January 9th. So we are basically November, December, January 9th. So we're two and a half months in. In two and a half months, we have gotten 7,400 people to engage, of which 4,300 people have started the conversation and 3,700 gave us their information. So now I have the ability, let's do some math, to run marketing campaigns targeting the difference. So instead of, let's just say that outcome, actually I can tell you, uh, maybe I can't tell you, I don't have, let's see if I have the cost factor here on the ads. No, that's not right. So let's just imagine if I had to go off of my assumptions here, 7,400 engagements, 4,000 people. It's probably $6,000. Oh, here we go. Never mind. I found the number. My bad. We changed our dashboard. $7,800. So $7,843.84 is what it took to get 7,442 engagements and 3,800 people's information. And that's about three months. So let's imagine... And by the way, that drove 59,000 in sales and it drove 930 people into the restaurant to spend that. So huge number there. But let's just imagine that I now know that, okay, I've got 7,400 people who took an action, but only 3,700 gave me their name, their visit frequency, and their phone number. Of which, by the way, 15.7% of those customers said they had never been to the restaurant. 45% said they hadn't been in a long time. 39% said they come all the time. So 60% of those people are very targetable people because they aren't coming to the restaurant right now. But if I subtract that number out, I have 3,665 people who we reached with advertising who took the, we'll call it bait. They clicked and did what I wanted them to do, but they didn't finish. Now I can spend my advertising money on the front end to reach those people again. The 3,777 people that already took the action, that already gave me their information, I can now reach them with email and text marketing, but also less expensive retargeting marketing because it's less expensive to retarget very specific people, especially when you know they're brand new, frequent, or lost. And let's just look at the last month. And by the way, that cost factor has got to be wrong. I'm looking at this. Oh, you know what? Yeah, that... That's not the ads. That's taking into account a lot of stuff working with our company. I've talked to my team on that. 
because their ad spend the last 30 days was 464 bucks, so 500 bucks a month times three, $1,500. So if I backtrack, that's even more effective. I knew these people were killing it. That $1,500 got, is what it took to get 7,400 engagements because this client's campaigns are just crushing it, like at a whole other level. I'm on a new level. That's what their campaigns are saying. So in the last 30 days, they've spent $464.95. Now, if you were renting the audience, that $464.95, if you wanted to get the same outcome, you might try and spend that again to reach the same people. That 464 got 1,005 people to give us their information, of which, and I'm going to talk about this in the next episode, it drove 567 people from their funnel because it wasn't 567 from that 1,000. It was 567 cumulative from prior two months' efforts. But it drove 564 visits from that, which is $28,000 in sales. Hell, just yesterday, just yesterday, Saturday, January 7th, $16 spent on ads, got 30 opt-ins, so 50 cents, 35 redemptions from the funnel, $1,968.68 in net sales. A 123 to 1 return on ad spend, meaning they spent $16 and it drove $1,900. Pretty impressive. But the reason I tell you that is on that, where I was telling you for the 30 day where they spent 464 and got 1,000 people's info. Well, now we don't have to spend money to reach those 1,000 people. We can probably reach them for $50 in retargeting and basically nothing for email and text in the big picture. We can now, if we want to, which we do, spend that 464 again to reach new people. We say, Facebook, Instagram, you helped me get 1,005 people's information, of which 567 or so, well, let's that's cumulative, of which these number of people walked in, and these people are frequent customers. Find me more people that look like that so I can repeat this and keep building my database every month with the right people. That is the opposite of renting an audience. It's predictable, it's reliable, and it's one of many tactics you should have in your tool belt when it comes to your marketing funnel, which is the next podcast is covering the marketing funnel. So that's all I got this episode. I am Matt Plapp with America's Best Restaurants, and that is episode 152 in the books. In the meantime, I want you to go to ABRU dot online slash deals abru dot online slash deals and find the different opportunities to work with us in the short term we're going to have it on a page that's pretty generic the next week or two it's going to go to a really fancy page that's going to talk about the normal ways to work with us and a couple specials we have going on and things we're going to change up each week because just like you we need to do things to attract new customers as well and we are a premium service on part of our programs. And sometimes you got to prove to people on the front end how awesome you are to get the results in the relationship on the back end. That client I just talked about was a restaurant that we visited with our ABR Roadshow. They hired us to come film an episode at their restaurant. It did unbelievable. And they said, holy crap, we need to know more about what you guys do. And then they saw the proof in the pudding and then they became a client at a higher level. So that's what this page is going to do. It's going to show, hey, this is how you work with us normally then here might be a couple little ways to work with us at a smaller level to get a little taste. So that's all I got. I will see you next episode. Have a great day.